Hi church family, my name is Christy and I'm on worship staff and I have the privilege of sharing about Psalm 118 today, which is so hard because there is so much you can focus on in this psalm. It is so rich and this is not enough time to do it justice. So we're going to focus on three things, what we can see about who God is, what he has done, and how we can encounter Christ in this psalm. Some people think this psalm was written by Moses celebrating the exodus of the Jews from slavery in Egypt. Other people think it could have been David celebrating a great victory in battle. Other people think it could have been another leader of the people of Israel celebrating the restoration, um, their restoration from exile in Babylon. But regardless of who the author is, it's really helpful to think about all that biblical history of captivity in Egypt and wandering and seasons of great corruption in their leaders and destruction of their cities and exile because every time God shows up, God delivers them and provides a savior. And that continues into the New Testament ultimately with our savior Christ. Um, and it's really beautiful to encounter Christ in this psalm. This particular psalm is quoted numerous times in the New Testament, even by Christ himself. So let's look at it together. How does it begin? It begins with a call to worship. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, Israel, the house of Aaron, those who fear the Lord, give thanks to the Lord. Why? Who is he? He is good. For his steadfast love endures forever. He is good and he has a love that is steadfast and enduring. And what has he done? Out of my distress I called on the Lord. The Lord answered me and set me free. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do to me? The Lord is on my side as my helper. I shall look in triumph on those who hate me. So this good, loving God, what has he done? He has answered and set him free. He is on his side. He has become his helper. Now, why does the psalmist say it is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in man? Well, look at the circumstance the psalmist found himself in. All the nations surrounded him on every side like bees. He was pushed hard and falling. He was weak and surrounded in impossible odds. But the Lord helped him. He gave him victory over his enemies. So why is this God better? Because this God can do what no man and no prince can do. He can offer safety, salvation, and deliverance, even in the face of impossible odds. So having seen who God is and what he has done, how does the psalmist respond? He gives thanks and praise for who God is. The Lord is my strength and my song, and for what he has done, he has become my salvation. They sing glad songs of salvation in the tents of the righteous, because their good God, their strength and their song, has done valiantly for them. He has delivered them. Now looking down to verse 21, I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. So looking again at verse 22, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. So this leader, this great leader of their people had seemingly been cast off by the people because they were surrounded, looking at the face of inevitable death and defeat, they gave up. But God became his salvation. And that day of destruction became a day of deliverance. The people respond in rejoicing and praise. Then look at verse 25. Save us, we pray, O Lord. O Lord, we pray, give us success. Now this phrase in Hebrew is actually the word Hosanna. Save us, we pray, or O Lord, save us. And didn't God already save them? This seems strange to have this here in the middle of a, a rehearsal of God saving them already. But yes, that's the point. He had already done such extraordinary works in their past that they could trust him to do the same in the present and the future. And they can cry out and trust him for the future. They can trust he who comes in the name of the Lord. And this is where we encounter Christ. Jesus actually quotes verse 22 in Mark 12 in a parable that hints at his own future rejection and his subsequent glory that shows that he is their true cornerstone. But what happened to this true cornerstone? As he enters Jerusalem the final time, the people greet him with shouts of joy, showing this verse, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And how interesting is it that what feels like just moments later after having acknowledged him, they cry out something different. They cry out, crucify him. The people who God had saved over and over and over again destroy the savior he sent. Christ became 
the rejected one. He became the rejected for the people who were surrounded by their greatest enemies. Through his death and resurrection, they could be raised up in victory over the death to eternal life. So he again provides salvation for his people, but this time, not just for Israel, for everyone. This psalm gives such hope to us. Those who believe, we can cry, save us, O Lord, we pray, O give us success. We can pray in confidence because God has already proven his faithfulness to his wandering, erring children in the Old Testament, in the New Testament, in our own lives. And through Christ, we have salvation forever. So who is God? He is our strength, our song, our helper, our deliverer, the true cornerstone whose love endures forever. And what has he done? In Christ, he has become our eternal salvation. He has delivered us from our ultimate enemies, sin and death. And how can we respond? Well, we can respond like the psalmist. We can sing praise to the Lord. You are my God, and I will give thanks to you. You are my God. I will extol you. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever.